Minecraft is normally a pretty chill game, right? Although you can die, there isn't any real penalty, and you can just go and get your stuff back. You can even just get rid of virtually all danger by turning the game mode to peaceful. But what if you took all that away? What if you can't change the difficulty? What if you can only die once? Then Minecraft is no longer the same relaxing game that it was before. Now, you have to be careful, because if you make a single mistake, you can lose your whole world. That's basically what hardcore Minecraft is. And in today's video, I'm going to be surviving 100 days of it. No gimmicks, just 33 hours in the same world. This video idea was originally done by a YouTuber named Luke the Notable. If you're watching this video, you probably know who he is, but just in case you don't, his channel will be linked in the description. I would highly recommend checking him out. Also, before we get into the video, it would be greatly appreciated if you could go down below and hit that like button, as this video took over 100 hours to edit and record. While you're down there, maybe think about hitting the subscribe button too. It's completely free, and you can always unsubscribe if you don't enjoy the video. Now that that's done with, enjoy 100 days of hardcore Minecraft. The first thing that I did when I spawned in the world was cut down a tree. I needed wood so that I could make the basic tools that I would use to survive the first few nights. After crafting a wooden pickaxe, I climbed a tree to see if I could get a better view of the area. I cranked my render distance up super high so I could see super far. Once I had gotten a basic idea of where everything was, I went over to a small pit of water to grab some stone. I felt a lot more confident now that I had a full set of stone tools. I even killed a few salmon. Now that the food was dealt with, I chopped a few spruce trees to get some extra logs. I also stole some of the berry bushes that the foxes nearby were using. Despite my earlier confidence, I didn't feel ready to face the monsters of the night yet, so I killed sheep instead to get a bed. As I was exploring, I came across a snow biome which I decided to explore because why not? There was some sugarcane next to a frozen river which I collected. Night was fast approaching, but I had found a village. I tricked the villagers into thinking that there was a raid by ringing the bell. If you didn't know, villagers run to their houses during raids. After that, all I had to do was block them inside their own homes. Once I had trapped the villagers, I took their biggest house and slept in it. On the start of day two, I looted everything of value from the village. Barrels, furnaces, beetroot seeds, I took it all. I needed a place to live for the early part of the 100 days, so I decided to set up shop in their house I had slept in on day one. Setting up basically meant placing all of the stuff that I had just taken from the village into one house. To keep the villagers out of my house, I placed a fence gate in front of my door. While wandering around the village, I found a path that seemed to go straight into a hill. This is where I decided to set up my mine. I hadn't managed to find any good resources digging the staircase, but once I had gotten down to Y11, I was quickly rewarded. There was lapis, iron, redstone, and gold, but sadly, no diamonds. To start off day 3, I made a cobblestone staircase to make it easier to get up and down from the mine. I then spent some time organizing the items I had managed to gather so far. With the iron I had gotten from a night of mining, I crafted a bucket, shield, and chestplate. It wasn't much, but I was proud. Right now, the village had basically no protection against mobs such as zombies and pillagers. I wanted to change that. Using the cobblestone I had collected, I started making a wall around the village. There were a few mistakes here and there, but by the end of the day, I had made a good start on it. On day 4, work on the wall continued. That was, until I ran out of cobblestone. I didn't have much iron, but I decided to use some of it to heal this iron golem. Now that I had exhausted the majority of the resources I had mined the previous night, I decided to dedicate the rest of the day and night to mining. And it was a good thing that I did, because I found my first vein of diamonds. To make it even better, it was a 9 vein. I was finished with the wall before noon on day 5. Now it was time for step 2 of my plan lighting up the area. I crafted a ton of torches and started placing them everywhere within the wall. This would stop any hostile mobs from spawning in the village. I wanted to light up the area as fast as possible, so I spent all of day 6 placing torches. By the end of the day, I had placed so many torches that I could even see them when my eyes were closed. The torch placing was completed on day 7. I wanted to see if there were any dark spots that still needed to be lit up, but I couldn't do that when it was still daytime. To pass the time until night, I mined. While I was mining, I found a cave. I didn't have time to fully light it up before night, so I marked its location and decided to come back tomorrow. Once night had fallen, I returned to the surface to see if there were any dark spots. I have to admit, it wasn't the most beautiful sight in the world, but I still thought it looked pretty cool. I also repaired the iron golem again with the iron I had gotten from mining. Now that the area was lit up, I could finally free the villagers. I wanted to be careful, so I only freed a few at first. I found a random ender pearl on the floor, which I thought was pretty cool. Afterward, it was off to the mines for me. I still needed to finish lighting up that cave. A little bit of mining later, I stumbled upon some diamonds. Yay! I came up just in time to watch the sunrise. Day 9 was a chill day. I started off by cutting some trees. After that, I worked on clearing out an area where I could build my animal pens. I then constructed an animal pen using a mix of spruce fences, logs, and slabs. Even if I managed to trap some animals in the pen, I wouldn't be able to breed them yet. 
To fix this problem, I decided to make a temporary farm so that I could grow some quick crops. I wanted to make all the animal pens close to each other, but there wasn't enough land to build all of them. With all of my newly acquired iron, I crafted some shovels and then got to digging. By the end of the night, I had managed to dig away a good chunk of the hill and the land already looked a lot flatter. When I looked outside, I saw some burning skeletons. I decided to capitalize on the opportunity and killed them so I could get some bones. After killing the skeletons, I spent a little bit more time digging away the hill. Once my inventory was full, I returned back to my house and worked on reorganizing the storage. I wanted to bring some animals to the village soon, so I used some of my bone meal to grow the wheat super fast and harvested it. Next to the crop farm, I set up a small sugarcane farm. I was going to need a lot of paper very soon. While I was walking around, I saw an enderman being slaughtered by an iron golem. I grabbed the grass it dropped and then ran away. None of the villagers I had freed had died since I let them go, so I freed the rest of them. The only cow in the village was trapped in a small 2x3 area. I freed the cow and then brought it to its new home. Day 11 started off the same as day 10. I went outside and gathered bones from burning skeletons. I then used those bones to tame a dog. I tried to get two, but the second one would not cooperate. My original plan was to find another cow to breed with the current one, but I ended up bringing some sheep back instead. After traveling through the forest for a few minutes, I also found a cow. Once both of the cows were in the pen, I breeded them and a baby appeared. I didn't want to put the sheep and the cows in the same area, so I built another pen right next to the cow pen and trapped the sheep in it. The rest of the night was spent digging out the hill. On day 12, I continued digging out the hill. I was beginning to get quite a lot of dirt, which would be useful for future projects. Some of my wheat had grown while I was digging, so I harvested it. The animals were also looking pretty hungry, so I took some fresh wheat and fed them. I started off day 13 by chopping some trees. After that, I harvested the wheat and sugarcane. Right now, my mine entrance was nothing but a hole in the side of a hill. I wanted to change that. All the dirt was finally coming in handy. I used it to terraform the area behind the main entrance, so it looked more natural. I had a bunch of stone after doing all that mining, so I put it to good use and piled some behind the entrance. I think that it turned out pretty good. To the left of the mine, I set up a small room where I could store some of the items I had large quantities of. This included stone, cobblestone, dirt, and so on. The iron golem also needed to be healed. Again. It was a good thing that I finished the bulk storage area when I did because my current storage was starting to overflow. I had some spare berries so I went over to one of the corners of the village and planted some. Villagers are not very smart, so I built a guardrail above the berries so they wouldn't walk into them. The rest of the night was dedicated to digging out the hill. The majority of day 15 was also spent digging out the hill. After digging for a while, I bred the animals. To make it easier to get into the pen, I added carpets on top of the fences so I could jump on top of them. On day 16, I finally finished digging away the hill. It had taken a while, but I think it was worth it. There were some holes around the village, so I spent some time filling them in. I bred the sheep one last time, and then killed the majority of them. The current color of my dog's color was red, but I decided to change it to light blue instead. The color of ice! Armed with my 38 mutton and half broken tools, I journeyed into the forest to where I had seen a cave. There was a ton of iron in the cave, and when I say a ton, I mean a ton. I think I had over three full stacks of iron when I was done. There was also a ton of mobs in the cave, but they quickly fell to my axe. Everything was going well until this happened. I almost died there. If that enderman had hit me one more time, it would have all been over. Despite almost dying to an enderman just a few seconds before, I still decided to fight the other one. I also found a zombie spawner, which was pretty cool. This skeleton tried to knock me into the lava, but I outplayed it, big time. When I returned to the surface, it was nighttime. There were tons of mobs lurking in the forest, so I quickly ran home and slept. The iron ore was virtually useless in its current form, so I put it in my furnace to smelt it into ingots. While I waited for the iron to smelt, I harvested my crops and bred the sheep and cows. One of the baby cows escaped, but I managed to trick it into going back into the pen. There was a pillager tower fairly close to the village. I decided to give them a warning to not come near the village by raiding their tower. The chest at the top of the tower had both carrots and potatoes. These would be useful for my future farming endeavors. Right now, I wasn't strong enough to fight all the pillagers head on, so I jumped off of their tower and then retreated back to the village. The igloos in the village didn't have floors, so I took some of my spare spruce planks and built some. 
Now that I had every type of crop in the game, I decided it was time to start working on the first big project of the world, a huge crop field. Using the dirt I had collected from digging the hill, I terraformed an area so that I would have room to make a field. From days 21 to 23, I prepared the ground for farming. Because I live in a snowbound, I had to place slabs on every water source to prevent them from freezing. You might also notice that the animations for the villagers, pillagers, and iron golems change after day 21. This is because I have installed a resource pack which makes small changes to the animations of those mobs to make them more fluid. On day 24, I finally finished turning the ground into farmland and was ready for the first planting. I gathered the seeds in my house, but when I went to leave, this villager just barged in and acted like he owned the place. Using a few tricks, I managed to convince him to go back outside. I felt proud as I planted those first seeds. It finally felt like I was beginning to thrive in the world instead of just barely surviving. During the night, I killed skeletons for bones and experience. With the bone meal I had gathered the previous night, I grew the crops in the village and then planted the seeds in the new field. Once that was done, I went onto the hill above my mine and built my nether portal. To prevent the villagers from going into the portal, I also fenced off the area around the portal. I then lit the portal and descended into the underworld. My nether spawn was horrible. I was in a huge basalt delta biome that was suspended above a lava ocean. This is the kind of nether spawn that speedrunners instantly reset. Magma cubes are the only mobs that spawn in basalt deltas, and they can do a lot of damage if you're not careful. So I quickly built a shelter around my portal so I'd be safe when I was entering and exiting it. After doing a bit more exploring, I headed back home and went to sleep. On the morning of day 26, I harvested the crops in the new field for the first time. After that, I bred the cows and then slaughtered them. With the leather and paper I had collected, I crafted a full stack of books. I then crafted those books into bookshelves, and finally, using some diamonds, obsidian, and a book, I made my first enchanting table. I needed a place to put my enchanting setup, so I found a random house, cleared everything out, and then placed my bookshelves and enchanting table. Using my diamonds, I crafted a fancy new set of tools and some shiny boots. After checking what enchantments I could get on my new gear, I decided to enchant my axe and got pretty lucky with efficiency and unbreaking. I also enchanted a book and got sharpness and efficiency on it. If I got a little bit more XP, I could do another level 30 enchant, so I went outside to kill some mobs. I then enchanted my boots and got feather falling 4 on them. It wasn't the best enchantment, but it would allow me to fall much farther before dying. Now that I had a full enchanting setup, I was finally using my levels and would need a faster way of getting XP. To solve this problem, I turned to the villagers. There was one villager in particular that I wanted to start off with, the Fletcher. If you didn't know, Fletchers will trade sticks for emeralds, which in my opinion is pretty awesome. I also made another villager into a farmer using a composter. By rerolling his trades, I was able to get him to trade me emeralds for carrots and wheat which I would soon have in abundance. It had been a while since I had last checked on the field, and when I did, the majority of the crops were ready to be harvested. The only problem was the size of the field. It was so big that I didn't have time to finish harvesting it before night fell. To start off day 28, I finished harvesting the crops from the field. After that, I bred the animals to get some experience. I also traded a bunch of my wheat to the farmer for emeralds and chopped some trees so that I could trade with my Fletcher more. I enchanted my sword, but wasn't happy with what I got, so I grindstoned it. On day 29, I chopped trees, traded with the villagers, and harvested my crops. This random iron golem tried to escape the village, but I needed it to protect the villagers, so I brought it back. Day 30 started off well. I enchanted my sword and got a pretty good starter enchantment. I needed more XP, so I bred and killed my cows. Because my sword had looting on it, I had got a lot of extra leather and meat from the cows. Two of the baby cows somehow managed to escape. I don't know exactly how this is happening, but I decided to just not worry about it. I needed to find a nether fortress so I could get nether warts, blaze rods, and other goodies, so I decided to spend a bit of time digging a staircase in the nether to find a more explorable area. Unfortunately, I didn't have any luck and decided to head back to the overworld. After my failed nether expedition, I spent some time trading with the villagers. I wanted to get a couple weakness potions so that I could zombify and cure my villagers to make them give me better prices, but I couldn't brew my own because I didn't have any blaze powder. This led me on a mission to find an igloo. For those of you who don't know, igloos can occasionally spawn with a secret room under the floor. In this room, there is a weakness potion and golden apple to cure some villagers. I spent all of day 32 searching for igloos. It didn't take me long to find my first one. Unfortunately, I got unlucky and there was no secret room underneath. I also found a village that had a ruined portal in it, which I thought was pretty cool. The second igloo that I found had an entrance to a secret room, 
but a cave generated beneath it, which stopped the actual room from spawning. On day 33, I returned back to the base. Right now, the only diamond armor I had were the boots. I wanted to change that. I would need to mine a lot of diamonds to make a full set of gear, and I didn't want to spend the next 10 days mining, so I decided to get a Fortune 3 pickaxe. My luck with the igloos ended up balancing out because I got Fortune 3 as the first enchantment for my pickaxe. I also had a Efficiency 4 book for my previous enchantment, which I put on my pickaxe using an anvil. Armed with my new OP pickaxe, I journeyed down into the mines. It didn't take me long to find my first fan of diamonds. There were 8 pieces of ore and I got 16 diamonds total. Pretty good. With the 4 extra diamonds I had from previous mining adventures, I had just enough to make the rest of the pieces of armor. As the sun started to rise, I donned the diamond armor. I was finally starting to feel strong. After crafting my new set of armor, I had a grand total of zero diamonds. There were still a few other tools that I needed to craft, so I headed back down into the mines and continued to search for the shiny blue rocks. I managed to get 15 diamonds from a day of mining. Not bad. One of my goals in this series was to get as many different types of villagers as I could in the village. I wanted to start off with the useful ones, so I took a blast furnace and made an armorer. The main reason why I wanted an armorer was to get the diamond armor trade. Once an armor is at its max level, it will trade you diamond armor for 10 to 40 emeralds. This would give me a good way to get backup gear in the future. Now that my iron armor was retired, I decided to make a memorial for it. I also decided to memorialize my first wooden pickaxe and shield. I then re-enchanted a pair of boots I had gotten from the armorer, and got really lucky with protection, unbreaking, and depth shredder. Combined that pair of boots with my feather flowing ones, and voila, I had some really awesome new shoes. Day 36 started with some stone smelting. While the stone was smelting, I heard some noises underneath me and decided to investigate. Just a few blocks below the village, there was a cave. I killed the zombies that were making the noises and started lighting up the cave, but decided to save the majority of it for another day. The rest of the day was spent cutting down trees in the village and harvesting the crops. I do have to say, when this field is fully planted, it's going to look pretty cool. My inventory was constantly being filled with seeds, so I made this simple auto composter so I could turn them into bone meal. All of day 37 was spent harvesting and replanting the crops. It took a while, but by the end of the day, I had a ton of wheat and carrots to trade with my villagers. It was finally time to use the stone that I had smelted a few days ago. My plan was to build a wall around the entire village, and it was going to take a lot of stone. I wanted to make sure that I had got the tower design right, so I took my time making it. After around two days of work, I managed to get the tower to a point that I was fairly happy with. Right now, there was no way for me to repair my gear, and I didn't want to have to keep making new stuff, so I decided to try and get a librarian villager that sold me mending books. It didn't take too long to get a mending trade, and to make things even better, it only cost 14 emeralds. After leveling the librarian up a few times, I managed to get a 4 emerald discount on the mending trade, and quickly bought another 3 books. I put the 4 mending books on my pickaxe, axe, sword, and boots. There was still a lot of gear that I needed to enchant, so I spent the whole night killing mobs. With full diamond armor, I wasn't too afraid of dying. The next villager that I wanted to work on getting was a weaponsmith. I wasn't really looking for any trade in particular, so I took the first one and started leveling up the villager. Once that was done, I left the village and went exploring. During the previous night, I had seen a jungle and wanted to check it out. There was a small ocean ruin by the shore of the jungle. After doing a little bit of digging, I found the chest which contained a buried treasure map. The treasure had a bunch of good loot that I wasn't about to say no to. Unfortunately, finding the buried treasure had taken the rest of the day and I didn't have time to explore the jungle. On day 42, I returned back to the jungle and this time I wasn't going to get sidetracked. Well, maybe I did get a little bit distracted, but this is technically part of the jungle, right? After looting the ruined portal, I collected some bamboo. Man, the sound of bamboo breaking is so satisfying. One of the main reasons why I had come to the jungle was for the giant jungle trees. By cutting them down, I was able to get a ton of sticks, which I could trade with my Fletcher for emeralds. When I got back to the village, I traded with my Fletcher, and then finished leveling up my weaponsmith. The rest of the night was spent mining. I didn't want to waste all my coal smelting cobblestone, but didn't have any other easy to get fuel sources. To solve this problem, I traveled to the nether, and harvested lava to use as fuel. The tower design was mostly complete, but there wasn't any design for the actual wall. While I waited for the cobblestone to smelt, I took my leftover stone from the tower and started working on a wall design. By the end of the day, I had a basic idea for the wall, which I was pretty happy with. To start the day off, I bred my animals for experience. At this point, there were so many animals in the pens that it took almost a full stack of wheat to breed the animals in each one. 
All the breeding had managed to get me back to level 30. I enchanted my sword, but didn't get what I wanted. The area by the animal's pens was starting to lag a bit, so I decided that it was time to kill the cows. There was so much leather and beef that I couldn't even pick it all up. During the night, I came to the villagers' houses, woke them up, and then traded with them. Using some diamonds, I crafted another pickaxe and enchanted it with silk touch. Now I wouldn't have to smelt the cobblestone to get the stone, I could just mine it. It was time. I needed to explore the nether. In order to beat the game, I was going to need blaze rods, which could only be found in nether fortresses. There was a lot of lava around me, and one misstep could be my end. Just as I was about to give up, I saw it. The red netherrack roofs of a nether waste biome. After arriving at the new biome, I was greeted by some piglins. There was a bunch of quartz in the area, which I mined for experience. As I was mining the quartz, I finally spotted a nether fortress. Nether fortresses contain some very dangerous mobs, so I took a more careful approach in entering the fortress. Exploring the nether fortress led me to some nether wart, which I would need for potion brewing. While I was exploring, I came across this wither skeleton, which I tried to block off, but couldn't. It took me quite a long time, but I eventually found a blaze spawner and started to collect a bunch of blaze rods. With my enchanted sword and diamond armor, the blazes didn't have much of a chance against me. After collecting almost a stack of blaze rods, I started to head home. These wither skeletons tried to block the path, but I quickly dispatched of them, and one even dropped his head. This ghast tried to explode me with some fireballs, but I managed to hit its fireballs back and kill it. I was still heading back to the base on day 46. At one point, I forgot to sprint and fell in lava. It didn't do too much damage, but it was still scary. There was a magma cube guarding my portal, but I killed it and got some magma cream. Potion brewing was pretty high on my list of priorities, so as soon as I got home, I went to the nearest beach and dug up sand for bottles. Between the quartz mining and blaze killing, I had managed to obtain 34 levels, so I enchanted this pickaxe and got really lucky. After falling in lava during my trip to the nether, I decided that it would be important to have some fire resistance potions, so I brewed a few for my next adventure. The rest of the night was spent killing mobs for experience. I started off day 47 by breeding the animals. Once that was done, I enchanted my chest plate and got protection 4. Then I sheared my sheep. I was going to need a lot of beds in the future. Killing the cows had given me a ton of raw beef, which I could trade with a butcher for emeralds. With all of the emeralds I'd collected from trading with my other villagers, it didn't take me long to get the butcher up to the journeyman level, at which point he traded me raw mun and beef for emeralds. Even better, at the master level, the butcher traded me sweet berries for emeralds. Trading with the villagers had gotten me back to level 30, so I enchanted my pants and got protection 4. A previous enchant had given me a sharpness 3 on breaking 3 sword, which I combined with my original sword. Now all that my sword needed was looting 3. The rest of the night was spent testing out my new sword on the mobs around the village. I wanted to brew weakness potions so I could zombify and cure my villagers, but I was missing one ingredient, brown mushrooms. The first place I decided to check for mushrooms was the jungle. For some reason, I thought that you could find them there. After I realized that mushrooms don't generate in jungles, I hopped in my boat and went exploring. It didn't take long before I found a mega taiga biome, which I knew from past experience had brown mushrooms in it. Once I had collected a bunch of mushrooms, I killed this enderman and then headed back home. Now that I had all the ingredients for brewing weakness potions, I was ready to start preparing for the villager zombification. Day 49 started off with some wall building. My plan was to zombify the villagers during the night and then lure them into an area where I could cure them all at once. There were quite a few flaws to this plan, but at the time I thought it was a good idea. After building the villager curing area, I trapped all the villagers in their houses. All the preparations were now complete. I released the zombie from the hole I put it in the previous night and lured it towards the butcher's house. Let's just say that this didn't go so well. I managed to trap the butcher again, and this time he didn't escape. Once the villager was zombified, I lured him into the curing chamber. As I was bringing the zombie over to the next villager, it was killed by an iron golem. F in the chat. Since my zombie was now dead, I decided to just cure the one villager I had managed to lure into the curing chamber. It was still night, so I managed to get another zombie and continued the zombifications. The next villager that I cured was the Mending Librarian. This one was much easier than the Butcher. I continued the villager conversion process on day 50. By the end of the day, I had managed to cure all the villagers and could finally get rid of the ugly dirt and cobblestone boxes around the village. Now that the villagers were giving me things basically for free, I made sure to capitalize on the opportunity and did some trading. Using the levels from the trading, I enchanted the helmet and got really lucky. To make it even better, the next enchantment was the last thing I needed to max out my helmet. After that, I went to the librarian and bought a few mending books. My armor was almost completely maxed out once I had put mending on everything. All I needed now was some unbreaking on my chest plate and leggings. The original plan that I had was to keep the zombie I'd used for the conversions, but it started to annoy me, so I killed it. I spent the rest of the night mining because I needed stone, though I did find some other goodies too. The next two days were spent working on the wall and towers. I hadn't fully fleshed out a design for the whole thing yet, so progress wasn't the fastest. Building the wall helped me to realize something. I was going to need a lot more stone than I originally thought. A normal, smart person would just do a bunch of mining to get the stone. 
I decided that that was not going to be the thing that I did. Instead, I was going to dig a huge hole away from the village that would act as a quarry. The quarry would be a 2x2 two two chunk square that I was going to try and dig as deep as possible. After marking out the area, I realized that my unenchanted diamond shovel was not going to cut it when it came to digging out the hole. Currently, my best source of experience was mining quartz in the nether, so after doing a bit of preparation, I went to the portal and traveled back over to the area where I had found the fortress. I mined a lot of quartz. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. I also mined the nether gold ore in the area so I could craft more golden apples for my villagers. When I returned to the base, I immediately enchanted my shovel and got exactly what I wanted. One mending book later, and I was ready to start digging the hole. With my new shovel, I tore through the dirt. If I'd had this kind of power when I was digging up the hill earlier in the video, it would have been so much faster. Once the initial layer was dug out, I placed some chests next to the hole and started working on the next layer. By the end of the day, I had managed to dig out all of the dirt in the hole. Mining the stone was much slower, but it was more valuable because I was actually using it on a project. Days 56 to 64 passed by in a blur. All I did during those days was work on the wall and dig the hole. I mined away at the hole during the night and built the wall with the stone during the day. It was a very monotonous but low effort task, and I was able to relax for one of the first times during the 100 days. When I was going to mine on day 61, the first wandering trader of the world appeared. This by itself wasn't very strange, but then another spawned the very next day. I started off day 65 by trading with my villagers to repair my tools. Eight days of digging had worn them down quite a bit. Once that was done, I grabbed my last stone bricks and finished the wall. There were still a lot of things that I wanted to do to improve it, but I had the basic frame complete. At some point, my farmer had been disconnected from his workstation, so I linked him back up to it so that he could start training again. Because I had used up pretty much all the stone finished in the wall, I decided to spend the rest of the day digging so I would have some extra for future projects. I hadn't been able to get a good view of the whole wall while building it, so I started off the day by just walking around and enjoying what I had built. After that, I went down into my mine and gathered a bunch of obsidian. Using the obsidian and some eyes of ender, I crafted two ender chests, one to carry like a backpack and one to stay in my house. Now that my gear was good enough, I was confident that I could kill the ender dragon. Before I could do that though, I needed to find the stronghold. I crafted a few eyes of ender and then grabbed one of my ender chests and a bunch of obsidian so that I could make another portal at the stronghold. I threw my first eye and then set off on my journey. One of the pillagers tried to attack me so I quickly dispatched of it. The stronghold was not very close to the village so I hadn't found it by the time night fell. However, I did get to do some exploring on the way, so I'd count that as a win. After a bit more searching, I managed to dig into the stronghold. It took me a long time to find the portal room. The stronghold had generated weirdly, and the layout was very confusing. I also had to deal with lots of mobs, but with my OP armor, they didn't stand a chance. Just when I was about to give up, I finally found the portal. Once I had taken the coordinates, I decided to try and find a library because one of my villagers would trade books for emeralds. While I was exploring, I also found this weird lava room, which I thought was pretty cool. The first library that I found only had one floor, which is definitely not normal. To make it even better, the only chest didn't even have any enchanted books. I took the majority of the bookshelves and then went looking for another library. There was another library fairly close by and it had actually generated normally. The chests also had some pretty good books. Once my exploring was finished, I sealed off the end portal room and then built my nether portal. It was far enough away from my original portal that it generated a new one. I rebuilt the portal at the correct location and then started working on a nether tunnel to connect it to the village portal. This wasn't the most pleasant experience. After a lot of stressful work, I managed to finish building a basic nether tunnel that I could use to get from the village to the stronghold and back. Let's just say that I had to take a short break after this to give my pinky a break from holding the shift key down so hard. The day wasn't completely over, so I spent some time getting rid of the old cobblestone wall. One of the only enchantments that I still needed was Unbreaking 3, so I worked on re-rolling a librarian's trades until they gave me what I wanted. The trade wasn't cheap, but I was pretty rich at this point, so it didn't matter. To start off day 71, I did a bunch of trading with my villagers. By selling the books from the library stronghold, I was able to get a ton of emeralds. I was going to need a good bow to fight the ender dragon, so I started working on getting one. While I was at it, I upgraded my sword as well. One of the dragon's main attacks is to knock you into the air super high, and I didn't want to take any chances, so I brewed a few slow falling potions. Like I said, just a few. My plan was to go end city raiding right after I killed the dragon, so I also brought the ingredients to make fireworks in an enchanted book that had unbreaking three and mending on it. Once my ender chest was stuffed to the brim with gear, I was ready to go. I didn't want to stall any longer, so on the morning of day 72, I jumped into the nether portal and said goodbye to the village. Every eye that I placed made me realize more and more that this could very well be the end for me. Despite saying that I wasn't going to stall, I still found myself hesitating to put the last eye in the portal 
and for some reason the inventory that I had been carefully organized the previous night now needed to be changed. Once I had finally psyched myself up, I finished the portal and hopped in. Of course, I spawned out in the middle of the void and had to bridge to get to the main end island. I've done quite a lot of talking in this video, so instead of narrating over this dragon fight, enjoy an epic montage. <laughs> Why? Why did I think it was a good idea to record 72 days of audio in one sitting? Why? After killing the dragon, I built a small rudimentary enderman grinder and farmed some ender pearls. With my looting 3 sword, it didn't take long to collect over a stack of ender pearls. Now it was time to bridge up to the end gateway so that I could travel to the outer end islands and search for an elytra. For some reason, the game decided to spawn me on a tiny end island in the middle of nowhere, so I cranked my render distance up, up super high and then started bridging. It didn't take too long before I found my first end city, and to make it even better, there was a ship. The loot in the end city was pretty good, and I managed to get some shulker shells, but all that mattered to me was the elytra. I grabbed my enchanted book and anvil out of the ender chest, and then maxed out my wings. As the final bit of shulker levitation disappeared, I opened my wings and soared through the sky. My plan was to search for an end gateway portal and then head back to the main end island, but I found a huge end city instead. The chances of dying in an end city are fairly high, but I decided that the riches outweigh the risks and headed in. I was able to get a ton of shulker cells for shulker boxes and some awesome diamond gear. Lucky for me, there was an end gateway fairly close to the end city, so I was able to get back to the main end island fairly quickly. I also made sure to collect the dragon egg as I had plans to make a memorial for it in the future. Before going back to the village, I took a moment to appreciate what I had accomplished so far in the 100 days. As I jumped back into the portal, I felt proud. But if you thought that was going to be the end of the video, you would be wrong. There were still a lot of things that I wanted to do in this 100 days and I didn't want to waste any time. I had never gotten an aerial view of the village before, so I flew up and enjoyed the view. After that, I organized all the loot I had collected from the end city rating, and let me tell you, the amount of loot that these cities give you is insane. Throughout the 100 days, I had been slowly gathering wool for my sheep for this moment. It was time to go netherite mining. Before leaving, I also brewed some fire resistance potions so that I wouldn't have to worry about the lava. Basalt deltas are the worst biomes to netherite mine in, so I flew away to the nearby nether waste and started staircasing to Y level 15. With my mending gear and fire resistance potions, I could keep mining for a long time without stopping and I had soon settled into the ancient debris mining groove. I blew up bed after bed and after day and a half of mining, I had managed to find almost 30 pieces of debris. While I was flying back home, I got the advancement for visiting all the nether biomes, which I was a bit confused about because I was in the middle of a lava ocean. The first thing that I did when I returned to the village was to start smelting my ancient debris. Once the debris was done smelting, I took out my gold and crafted 7 shiny new netherite ingots. I placed the smithing table down and then took off all of my armor. This was the fun part. Each piece of diamond armor went into the smithing table and each came out netherite. I didn't have enough netherite to upgrade all of my tools, so I ended up just going with my sword, 
Silk Touch Pickaxe, and Axe. As I exited the smithing table interface, I was awarded with the Cover Me in Debris advancement. I had come a long way compared to the inexperienced adventurer from day one. Although I had super good gear, there was something that I had been neglecting. The actual village. I had been living in a villager home the entire video, and hadn't taken the time to really build anything other than the mine entrance. It was time for that to change. For the rest of day 77, I worked on building a fountain to be a centerpiece for the village. This was going to be one of the main features of the village, so I wanted it to look good. On day 78, I finished the well. It wasn't perfect, but I was still pretty happy with it. Now that the villagers had a new town square to hang out in at the end of the day, I removed the old hangout area so that I could make some expansions to the fountain. The next part of my plan was to destroy the old buildings and then replace them with new ones that fit more with my vision for the village. The first building that I wanted to tackle was the library, so I removed the lecterns from the building that the librarians had been working in, and then tore it down. Destroying the old library had given me quite a few blocks to build with, but I needed a lot more, so I spent some time chopping trees to get wood. Now that I had enough building blocks, I got to work on designing a library. I had a basic idea of what I wanted to make, but I hadn't tested anything out yet, so I didn't know if the idea would turn out well. By day 80, I had gotten a good start on the build, but I felt like it was missing something. Then I remembered that I still didn't have one of my favorite blocks, Dark Oakwood. With my elytra, exploring was super easy, and it didn't take long before I stumbled upon a dark oak forest. By mining the leaves with Fortune 3, I was able to get a bunch of saplings so that I could plant my own dark oak trees back home. It didn't take me long to get a bunch of saplings, but I still didn't have what I had come for, dark oak wood. So I took out my netherite axe and started chopping. While I was flying back home, I came across a village. Despite the fact that I had a huge wheat field, I still stole all of the hay bales from the villagers because why not? After arriving back home, I spent the rest of the day working on the library. Taking a quick break from the build had given me some time to think about what I wanted to make, and it was a lot easier after returning. The next two days were spent building the library, and by the end of day 82, I was fairly happy with the build. If you have any suggestions for the builds in this series, make sure to leave them down in the comments below, and I might end up using them in the next 100 days. After working on tidying up the interior of the library the previous night, I finally moved the lecterns from the old library into the new one. Now the librarians wouldn't have to work in the snow anymore. Killing the dragon had given me quite a bit of experience, so I decided to visit the enchanting house and upgrade some of my gear. I enchanted some books and got Punch 2, Efficiency 4, and Looting 2. All of the other dud enchantments went straight to the grindstone. With the books I had enchanted, I was able to fully max out my sword, silk touch pickaxe, and bow. Now that I had looting 3 on my sword, I was finally able to complete another one of my goals for the 100 days, killing the wither. The nether fortress I had found earlier in the series did not seem to be spawning very many wither skeletons, so I decided to try and find another fortress to gather skulls. While I was flying, I stumbled upon a bastion, however I didn't plan on exploring it in this 100 days. Eventually I found another fortress, which was in a much better place than the original one. The second wither skeleton that I killed gave me a skull. It seemed like my wither skull luck for the series was pretty good. For some reason, this ghast decided to fly right next to me. When I tried to help it get back in the air, it just disappeared. Strange. Getting the final skull took a lot longer than the first and second ones, but overall I still consider myself to be pretty lucky. Once I returned to the village, I began preparing for the wither fight. Normally I would just cheese the wither by killing it under the end portal or in a strip mine, but this time I was going to fight it out in the open. On the morning of day 85, I was ready. There was no way that I was going to fight the wither anywhere near my base, so I flew off and found a fairly open place that would be good for the fight. As I placed each piece of the wither, the reality that there was a good chance that I wouldn't make it out of this fight alive became clearer and clearer. The final skull was placed and nothing happened. Turns out withers can't be summoned if there's snow underneath them. This time, the wither spawned in successfully. I chugged a speed potion and then started shooting. By timing my shots carefully, I was able to avoid being withered and was dealing steady damage to the wither. After getting the wither to its second phase, I drank my strength and regeneration potions and then started swinging. All it took was a few well-timed crits and the fight was over. I don't even think the wither managed to get me below 9 hearts. To celebrate, I drank some milk and then admired the nether star head one. When I returned to the village, I crafted my first beacon. I didn't have enough resource blocks to make the full pyramid, so I decided that I would use it as an actual beacon to show where the village was until I had enough riches to make a full one. I wanted to relax a little bit after all the fighting I had done the past few days, so I terraformed around the village to make room for a blacksmith where my armorers, weaponsmiths, and toolsmiths could work. Although the wall was now complete, 
I still wanted to see how deep I could dig the quarry. I was also going to need a lot of stone to build the blacksmith. Once I had a good amount of stone, I began building the blacksmith. Work on the blacksmith continued throughout day 87. This was probably the hardest build that I worked on during the 100 days because I just couldn't get it to look the way that I wanted. By the end of the day, I had finished the blacksmith, but it still needed detailing. Adding small things to a build that don't really add function, but still look cool, are some of my favorite things to make because it gives the build more of a story and helps to bring it to life. However, when you're working in an area with villagers, make sure to baby-proof everything. While I was walking around the village, I stumbled upon this injured iron golem, so I healed it. These guys are starting to become very expensive. I felt like the library was missing something, so I smelted some quartz and then added a big G to the front and back of the tower on the library. Much better. Day 89 started off with mining in the quarry. The final build that I was going to make in this video was going to be my biggest yet, and it was going to require a lot of stone. This build was going to be a church. I didn't necessarily need a church, but I had never built one before and now felt like the perfect time to make one. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was this church. In fact, it took five whole days of non-stop work to construct it. I would definitely say the amount of time it took was worth it, because it turned out way better than I thought it would and was my favorite build of the 100 days. Now that I had a few buildings in the village, I wanted to start working on the infrastructure and make it look less like a village and more like a town. The first step to doing that was upgrading the paths. I decided to keep the stone theme of the village and made the paths out of stone and gravel. There was still one thing that I needed to do to finish the church. Add the G. Now I could say that I've actually built a church in Minecraft. The old enchanting house had served me well, but I thought that it was finally time to move my enchanting setup to the library where it belonged. After moving the setup, I tore down the old building. Little by little, each part of the village was slowly being transformed. To start day 96, I crafted some golden apples. Having two absorption hearts and regeneration could be the thing that saves me one day. When I think of a library, the first thing that comes to mind is books, and the only books that my library had were the ones in the enchanting setup. To solve this issue, I crafted some of the books I had gotten from the stronghold into bookshelves, and then started decorating. It was almost time for the final challenge of the 100 days. To prepare, I trapped the villagers in their homes, just like I did on the first day of my adventure. With all the building and fighting, I hadn't slept in what seemed like forever, so I returned to my home after trapping the villagers and rested before my final battle. I still had quite a few potions left from the wither fight, so I collected them and then flew over to the pillager tower. I found a pillager captain immediately, so I killed him and then left before the pillagers even noticed. After landing on a nearby mountain, I paused, preparing myself for one last fight. Once I was ready, I returned to the village and started the raid. Everything seemed to be going well until the raid bar mysteriously disappeared. I was a little bit confused until I found all of the pillagers clumped up near one of the towers. Now the fight began in earnest. The first few waves of the raid were easy, and I was able to take them on without losing too much health. By standing on the roof and tower up the church, I was able to snipe the pillagers from above while the iron golems attracted their attention. At one point, I decided to jump down from the tower and fight a ravager head-on. After getting a few hits on me, some vex swooped in and got me down to half health. The rest of the raid was finished without too much of an issue, and none of the villagers were killed. However, we did lose a few iron golems. F in the chat. Although the hero of the village effect was nice, the main thing I was excited about were the totems of undying. With one of these in my hand, I wouldn't have to worry about dying all the time. Before going to bed, I made sure to heal the remaining iron golems and free the villagers. Now that the raid was defeated, I took some time to relax and harvested the crops. When the field is completely grown, this is one of the most satisfying things to do in Minecraft. I wanted to share some of my harvest with the villagers, so I woke the farmer up and made him buy my crops. The animals were looking pretty hungry as well, so I gave them some of the fresh wheat. Once everyone was fed and happy, I traveled to the stronghold and gathered books for the rest of the night. I spent all of day 99 trading with my villagers because my hero of the village effect was giving me some crazy discounts. By the end of the day, I had gathered enough emeralds to make a tier 2 beacon. It wasn't much, but I was happy with the progress. After setting up the beacon, I headed back to my house and went to sleep. Day 100. I had done it. I had not only survived 100 days of hardcore Minecraft, but thrived. I decided to take this day to relax and just enjoy what I had created.
There was still one thing that I needed to do, however. I grabbed a fishing rod, enchanted it, and then visited my dog. Together, we traveled to the beach, hopped into a boat, and then sailed to a nice, quiet place. Fishing. Something that is often taken for granted in Minecraft, but is also considered an important part of the game. Out there, in the boat with my dog, I could understand why. As the sun started to set, I flew to the top of the church with my dog and watched the sunset. All of this had started from a small village, barely thriving in the harsh, snowy tundra. There were still a lot of things that I wanted to do in this world, but for now, I was proud. So everyone, that was 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video and haven't subscribed yet, here's your friendly reminder that the subscribe button really wants to be clicked. If this video gets 50 likes, I will survive another 100 days. So if you want to see a sequel to this video, make sure to hit that like button. With all that said, this has been Glitching Out. Goodbye, everyone.